Dad, under some things. Go for it. <laughs> I need a glow up to help me. I'll help you. Episode 20. Simple machines can crush all. I thought for the final episode of the school year, I would do a Rube Goldberg machine that focuses on the six simple machines that we look at in physical science. Rube Goldberg became famous for his cartoons depicting everyday simple tasks being completed in very complicated and impractical ways. Interestingly enough, before his career as a cartoonist, he studied engineering at UC Berkeley, and you can certainly see evidence of his knack for mechanics in his art. The lever is possibly the most common of all simple machines. They are everywhere. Basically, it is a rigid bar that is pivoted on a fulcrum or hinge to increase an applied force or effort. The further away the force is applied from the fulcrum, the more mechanical advantage the lever gains. So for the lever portion of my rube, I'm going to have a marble knock this hammer uh, over its fulcrum. It's going to come down and lift up this board, which is going to release the spring car. It's going to travel down here, hit the clothespin, swing around, and hit my blocks. So for each of these, I'm just kind of testing them out to make sure they work. The incline plane is just a technical way of saying a ramp. If you think of a set of stairs, lifting has to be done straight up in order to climb. The incline plane takes that same force required to lift up a single step and spreads it out over a smooth gradient so that the force required to climb is less, although it needs to be applied over a larger distance. I'm going to start this one off with some bananagrams knocking a marble down a ramp. It's going to bounce, hit these blocks, remove this wedge from the car, which will come down, release this clip, train will come down and hit the blocks. And when we do this in the classroom, a lot of kids want to build the whole thing and then try to get it to work all at once. And I found that building these in smaller parts and testing them to make sure they work is a much better way to do it. The wheel and axle are also very common in your everyday life. This machine is a circular or cylindrical wheel that rotates around a rod called an axle. It makes doing work easier because the load carried by the wheel and axle is constantly transferred to the ground as the wheel rolls forward. The idea here is that the magnet will roll down, attract the other magnet, pull this clip, releasing the frog, which is attached to a wheel and axle or kind of a zip line type thing, come down and hit the book. This one took quite a few tries to get it to work. Next up is the pulley, which is kind of like a stationary wheel and axle. They are pretty amazing though, because not only can they change the direction that a force needs to be applied to move a load, they can also change the size of the force, called the magnitude, if they are arranged correctly. For this one, the car is going to roll down and knock over the cups. There's some weights sitting on top of the cups. They're going to pull the string over the pulley, which will lift up the cup, let the ball roll down the ramp, and then bounce around in this V-shaped section here. And again, testing is a very important part of this to make sure they work. The screw is most well known as a fastener for materials, meaning it is used to hold things together. However, it also can be thought of as an inclined plane that revolves around the central axis, much like the big spiral walkways you sometimes see at stadiums. Now this is one of the more complex ones, but the lock here is going to spin around this tripod and hit my blocks, which will fall down. They're going to release a ball at the top of this um, screw inclined plane, and they're going to hit some bananagrams, which is going to hit a mousetrap pulling on a magnet that's attached to a metal ball and that metal ball will then fall through the spiral tube and come down and hit my blocks. This was a really difficult one and took probably about 30 tries to get it to finally uh, work in the end. The wedge takes an applied force and turns it 90 degrees in either direction. A doorstop is a prime example of a wedge because you push it towards the door and the doorstop applies the force down towards the ground and upwards on the bottom of the door. This will be the final component of the Rube Goldberg machine. The books are going to knock over this hand, which is going to hit the wedge. The wedge is going to push the can crusher off of the table there. And hopefully, uh, with the help of my scuba weights, it's going to be enough to come down and crush the can. Pause heel. So all together now, we're going to use the vortex cannon to knock over the cup stack, lifting the cup over the pulley and releasing the bouncy ball, which will set off the wheel and axle portion with my zip lining frog. That comes down to knock over my books, uh, initiating the screw section of the Rube Goldberg, definitely the most difficult and tedious one here. That will lead to the lever section of it here with my hammer and my spring car. Come around, hit these blocks, release cars over my inclined planes. We're going to climb a little bit there uh, and bounce down our marble, which will set off a mousetrap and lead to the lever section. 
the can crushing part, the fun part. Don't be frustrated if it takes a long time for you to get yours to work. Um, I want to give a huge thank you to my family for all the help with this one. And I think this will keep you busy. Uh, let me know how your Rube Goldbergs go.